a government agency is looking to grow their HR staff as it continues to grow. And what's the best way to grow a staff? Using money to incentivize people. And that's exactly what's going on here. The Veteran Affairs has granted a 15% increase in salaries using SSR, which is the special salary rate for human resource employees within the VHA. The VA did this last year when it rolled out SSR for its IT workers in the 2210 job series. And now it's doing it again with the 0201 and the 0203 job series. SSR has actually been used in a lot of different federal agencies across the government as a tool, not only to encourage and incentivize people to come work for them, but mainly as a retention tool to keep the people in the agency. This action looks like it will impact about 8,000 federal employees between the grades of GS4 and GS15. Now keep in mind, if you're on the higher end of the pay scale, let's say you're GS-15, you probably will not be seeing the same type of raise, especially if you're maxed out. Right now, the max I believe is $191,000 a year. So if you're at that max as a GS-15, this 15%, it's not gonna put you over any. You're not gonna be making any additional money. The VA is anticipating on hiring at least a thousand new HR professionals every year. And in order to do this, they're using the HR STAR program. This program's goal is to bring in at least 80 to 100 new HR professionals every month. This is interesting because if you look on usajobs.gov right now, you can't find a job announcement for this program. This is possibly because of budget issues that's going on in the government right now. But if you look in the spring, maybe the summer, probably around June, July, you should start to see some announcements pop up. And the way that you would search for them is you just type in HR star in the search bar of usajobs.gov. And the way that the HR star program works, it is for recent graduates doesn't necessarily matter the degree, doesn't matter the program, but you need to have been a recent graduate. And then it is a one year program. After you apply to the job announcement, the selections are made through the year. And then you're placed on a path of either recruitment, placement and compensation or labor relations and performance management. Applicants are hired at the GS9 level. So depending on where you're located, the starting salary would change. If you're in DC, for example, the starting salary would be about $68,000 a year. If you're in a smaller or a more rural area, then your starting salary would probably be about $59,000 a year. The requirements of the program say that you have to stay at least a year before getting promoted, before transferring or moving. After that one year, you're probably eligible for GS11 positions. That could be built into the actual job that you're working in, or you would apply in order to get your GS11. Now, if you're interested in this, there's an email address. I'm gonna put it on the screen right now. This is the email address that you would email if you have any questions about this program. Interestingly enough, one of the chiefs at the Veteran Affairs, they said about the HR program, once you get into the VA, you're working as HR. A person's not gonna understand everything for at least three years. And this is somewhat typical of a lot of different government positions. You go and work, I don't care what agency it is, when you first start working there, it's gonna take you multiple months. And then you could be sitting in your position at the one year mark and still not know a lot of the acronyms in your agency a lot of people come and go, so when it comes to the executives and the main decision makers, you might be struggling with their names, so it takes a while. With human resources, one of the issues that I explain to people oftentimes is if you're trying to get into the 0200 series and you do not have relevant experience at the federal level with the HR, it's very hard to come in above a GS9. If you want to come in as a GS11, GS12, oftentimes they want you to have direct experience using their systems. It's not enough that you've done HR in the military or you've done HR in the private sector because they want you to have the federal level of experience. So this would be an opportunity to get that level. Now, I also have to warn you that people think they want to be HR. Once they're in the HR position, they're like, whoa, wait a minute, this is not for me. And then they try to pivot, which is fine. You can do that but you should go into the position with your eyes wide open. A lot of times they are overworked. A lot of times they people are not grateful for the work that you're doing. You're dealing with a lot of upset people and there's a time crunch on pretty much everything, right? So if that's for you, if you have a passion, you know, internally 
for human resources than pursue a program like this. So far for the HR Star program, over 10,000 people have applied. And last year there were a lot of people who applied and then they had an email coming about an interview. They wanted to schedule an interview. And then as soon as the interview is scheduled, let's say a couple of days later, the interview is canceled because now they don't need you. So there's been some talk about that. There's been some rumors that it's difficult to get in and it's going to be based on your experience. But if you want to get in HR, you need to apply for this position. This is definitely one way that you can get in. The main push for this program, it has to be the PACT Act, which expands health care to millions of veterans that would not ordinarily receive it. Not every veteran coming out of the military receives health care. It's only certain ones. They have a disability rating or they have a retirement. Well, this PACT Act, this opened it up to everybody who served in Vietnam and Iraq and Afghanistan that were deployed in these locations that were exposed to this toxic fumes. So that's what's causing the demand of having more health care workers, more uh, mental health specialists, things like that. And all these people, they need to be on board. And that's where, that's where HR comes into play. VA has also given critical skill incentives to many jobs like housekeeping aides, security personnel, and police officers. I was on usajobs.gov the other day. I found a housekeeping aid and it had something like a $1,000 or a $2,000 bonus just for signing up. It was like the sign-on bonus. Now, if you still want HR, you don't want to wait on the VA's HR Star program. You want to find other federal agencies where you could perhaps get your start. I would honestly, I would look at the GS7 or GS9 level if you're trying to get into HR. And the top agencies right now for 0200 positions is the Department of Defense and the Department of Justice. But if you're comfortable right now just sitting on the sidelines waiting for the VA to start their program again, I would encourage you to look at other job series. It's not just zero two. There are other job series out there that could be for you. One way to do that is to open the OPM job series handbook. Another way to do that is to talk to somebody, to have a conversation with somebody who's currently a federal employee. So don't just sit around waiting if you can help it. If you are still looking for a federal government job, I did a live stream recently where I discussed the federal hiring process. I discussed usajobs.gov, how to navigate it, talking about different government jobs. A lot of these questions, they could be on your mind. If you're interested in that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.